So now I'm going to talk about the evaluation. Some aspects I've already discussed during the analysis by accident, but I'll re-refer to them just to give a bit of context. Evaluation assesses the extent to which a student's report provides evidence of evaluation of the investigation and the result with regard to the research question and accepted scientific context. So the first thing to note is that you must go back to your research question and you must go back to your accepted scientific context. What were you asking? What did you predict and why? Now I'll go to the maximum mark of six and discuss what you need to do to get that six out of six. You need to provide a detailed conclusion which is described and justified, which is entirely re relevant to the research question and fully supported by the data presented. The conclusion is correctly described and justified through relevant comparison to accepted scientific context. Strengths and weaknesses of the investigation, such as limitations of the data and sources of error, are discussed and provide evidence of clear understanding of the methodological, <laughs> methodological, I can't say that word, issues involved in establishing the conclusion. The student has discussed realistic and relevant suggestions for improvement. So, we need to start with a conclusion. If you go to the lower uh, points, it's clear what you have to do. The conclusion is either outlined for low marks, described, and then for higher marks, described and justified. That means that you have a conclusion using data, using your gradient, using your uncertainty, and it is fully justified qualitatively. You have also answered the research question. So this goes back to what we said before. You've answered exactly the research question that you put in your the initial part of your report. The conclusion is correctly described and justified through relevant comparison to the accepted scientific context. So not, not only have you said, yes, this is my answer, uh, this is my evidence, this fits in with my theoretical model that I came up with in my exploration. Now, if you haven't got a theoretical exploration, if you haven't got a theoretical background, there's no why to your hypothesis, then you cannot get this full mark, this full credit. So as I showed you before, your conclusion has to refer to uh, the results of your analysis, your gradient, your equation of the line. There has to be some mathematical reasoning. To refer to the theoretical information. My prediction was correct because the results follow a linear relationship that matches with the one hypothesized when plotting the equation RT was blah blah blah. But anyway, so you're referring specifically to your hypothesis. And this means that the behavior of the corpora wire matches the theoretical information. So this candidate can leave it very briefly because they did a very, very good job of explaining the theory previously. Um, if you haven't done that, then you would have to go into the theory now in sufficient detail to make your to fully to make it fully evident what you mean by your conc your conclusion. Now the evaluation itself. The first thing that you have to do is make sure that you emphasize that whatever relationship you've proven, you state, and this is very important, you state categorically that you only have evidence for the range that you have studied. So for example, if you're trying to find the relationship of a pendulum, you say for the lengths that I have included in my research, I can categorically say that the hypothesis was correct because you don't know what's going to happen if you make your pendulum twice as big as your maximum length. You don't have evidence for that. So it's important that you make that distinction. For the data that you have, yes, you are confident that the conclusion is etc. Um, limitations of the data would start with that one. And then you have to pick apart all the sources of error. Now, how do you know that you have a source of error? Your graph will tell you that you have a source of error because although you have a linear trend, as we can see here, although the line of best fit goes through the error bars, the points themselves do not fall on the line of best fit. 
and if you're expecting a linear relationship they should be on that line so this is proof that you have errors so you cannot have a graph like this one and then in your evaluation say that everything's great because it's not you have errors you can also see here that there are systematic they're either systematic sorry or random errors we can see here that there doesn't seem to be a pattern in how far away these dots are from the line so there are some sources of random error you can even go and look at the data itself to see maybe there are systematic errors in there that are averaged out for example but it depends how much time you want to spend on that it's important that you emphasize you understand that these are random errors look for random and systematic this particular relationship should go through the origin for example but it doesn't because it has a systematic error that's an example identify what kinds of errors you have and then try and figure out where in your experiment those errors have come from now this is where it gets tricky because it's no there's no point now trying to state really obvious errors that you should have avoided in the first place if you state an error that you should have avoided then you will lose marks on your method so don't repeat errors that you've avoided don't repeat errors that you've mentioned you need to work out sources of random and systematic errors that are completely new lastly you need to discuss realistic and relevant suggestions for improvement and extension this is in the first section here you don't even get two marks if you don't mention some realistic and relevant suggestions for improvement so it's important that you include this right from the start now what do we mean by improvement not something general if you have highlighted a an error you have highlighted something that's gone wrong or that's produced a systematic error then what you do is you mention uh, specific things that would improve that error that you've identified right uh, secondly extensions you might want to then expand your investigation this is relevant to those of you who get really good graphs whose equipment has been kind of you know very very accurate or, or already got inbuilt features how would you expand it well you would use a different set of equipment to look at a slightly different context and that slightly different context would be relevant to your research question so for example um, I'm investigating pendulums I find my answer how can I expand it well it would be really interesting to look at giant pendulums the size of a uh, four quartz pendulum or to look at tiny pendulums or the vibration of a crystal in a stopwatch it's taking that same idea and that same research question and taking it to another level that's what we mean by extensions um, to your investigation okay so on the one hand improvement you've identified your errors now how would you change your experiment to avoid them and then secondly how could you take your experiment super far so if we look at the checklist checklist this will help you get started you have a conclusion stated you've discussed it with respect to the research question and I'm going to add and theory here you have calculated your uncertainty and you've used it to justify your conclusion so my value for G is 9.81 plus or minus uh, 0.5 it definitely fits my hypothesis your exploration information used to support the conclusion so there's where you use your theory your exploratory theory to justify the answer that you've got limitations of data discussed state the range my conclusion is valid only within the range of my experiment which is length of 30 centimeters to 4 meters I have no idea if it would work outside that it's important that you say that you've identified sources of both systematic and random error and you've related that to your method and results avoiding errors that you've already highlighted in the beginning as things you were going to avoid realistic and relevant improvements and extension considered and then when you've done that you're good to go the only thing left is communication 
Now it's important that you keep the size of the presentation between 6 and 12 pages. The font has never been specified, but keep it so sensible between anything between 10 and 12. That your report has structure, which starts with your introduction. Um, we can talk about this another time, but it doesn't. there's no specific structure. I don't like to force people to follow one, uh, but make sure that the parts are headed correctly. Use of spe uh, specific terminology is correct, that you don't have any major um, errors, and that you label, this is really important, that you label all graphs and tables correctly. And I'm going to add one now here, I'm going to add one, which is the bibliography. Oops, not let me do it. I'll do that when you're not looking. Please remember to add your bibliography. There we go. So um, at some stage in your exploration, you would have read around your subject. Include citations. Make sure anything that you've used is cited and include your bibliography. And that's it. That's your Physics IA. Good luck with that.